Dear students, today I am here with the first chapter of class 11th, taken from the Hornbill book. The title of the chapter is The Portrait of a Lady, written by Kushwant Singh. My dear students, I appreciate your constant support and positive feedback. Keep showing us your love through the comment section. And if you are new to the channel, do not forget to subscribe us. One more thing, if you find our explanation helpful, share it with your friends because knowledge doubles up when shared. Without taking much of your time, let me now begin with the title of the chapter, The Portrait of a Lady. What according to you is a portrait? Well, the literal meaning of a portrait is a painted or photographed picture of someone, correct? In this chapter, we see that the author Kushwan Singh has made a pen sketch of his grandmother. He graphically describes the personality of his grandmother who had all the attributes of a lady. While you read the chapter, you will be able to create a visual image of the author's grandmother. So let me start explaining the chapter to you. Here the author talks about his grandmother. He had known her for the past 20 years and she had always been old and wrinkled for Kushwant Singh. That's the author. He was told that she was once young pretty and had a husband. His grandfather's portrait hung on the wall in which he wore loose fitted clothes, a turban and had a long white colored beard that reached his chest. His grandfather also appeared very old and the author thought that he was someone who could have many grandchildren. He could not connect to the ideas that his grandmother was once young and pretty. His grandmother used to tell him and his cousins about her childhood memories like the games she used to play as a child. And they found these stories to be illogical and disrespectful because it was beyond their imagination to think that grandmother was once a child and played such games. They thought that her life stories were like the other moral stories which she used to tell them. Now the author tells us that his grandmother was short, fat, slightly bent in her posture and her face had lots of wrinkles. She seemed so old and she had been the same for the past 20 years. According to the author, she was beautiful but not pretty. She walked around the house in an awkward way, wearing spotless white sari with beads of rosary hanging from one hand and the other hand rested on her back for support and she had silver colored hair which was not neatly combed and was disorganized. She was constantly chanting prayers. The author compares her to the winter landscape in the mountains which has a peaceful and calm feel. She was a live example of a pure white peace emitting entity. The author lived with her in the village and both the grandmother and the author were very good friends. His parents left him with her to settle in the city. The author's grandmother used to wake him up every morning and get him ready for school. She would recite her morning prayers while she bathed and dressed him up and he loved her voice but would not try to memorize a word of what she spoke. She would make his things ready like a wooden slate, a tiny earthen ink pot, a red pen would be handed over to him while he would go to school. The author would eat a thick stale chapati with butter and sugar spread on it and both of them used to walk to the school. His grandmother used to carry extra stale chapatis with her to feed the village dogs. It was the routine of his grandmother that she would accompany him to school. Why? Because there was a temple that was attached to the school and she would visit the temple daily. On one side, the author would sit in the veranda with other children, would sing the alphabets and prayers in the chorus. On the other side, his grandmother would sit in the temple and read the scriptures. After finishing, they would both walk back home together. The village dogs met them at the village door and they would follow them to their home, growling and fighting with each other for the stale chapatis that his grandmother fed them. When his parents got settled in the city, they called them. That was the turning point of his friendship with his grandmother. They shared the same room, but she no longer would give him company to his school. 
he started going to school which was an english medium school and a motor bus would come to pick and drop him there were no dogs in the streets whom grandmother could feed as she did in the village so she started feeding the sparrows in the veranda of their house as the years passed in the city their interaction reduced for some time she continued to wake him up and would get him ready for the school she would ask him what he had learned in the school that day the scientific terminologies and the english words made her unhappy as she didn't know the language she could not help the author with the lessons as his new school never taught him about god and religious scriptures this made her sad she did not approve of such an education when she came to know that he was getting music lessons it disturbed her a lot according to her music was indecent and it was an art for the beggars and prostitutes and not for those who belonged to decent families she didn't like that he learned music so she stopped talking to him as the author went to university he had his own room the common link of his friendship with his grandmother that they had when they shared the same room was changed now and thus his friendship with her ended she became more private and spent her whole day spinning wheel from sunrise to sunset she would sit and silently recite her prayers in the afternoon she used to feed the sparrows in the veranda breaking the bread into small pieces she would feed hundreds of birds she was the happiest in that half an hour during the whole day when the author decided to go abroad for further studies he believed it would be the last time he would see her as he would be gone for five long years as they all reached the station she held him tightly and kissed his forehead he thought it was the last physical contact with her the wet impression of her hand was dear to him she was not sentimental at all when he came back after 5 years she came to meet him at the station she looked just the way she did 5 years ago not a day older she held him again in her arms and was still reciting her prayers he noticed on the first day of his arrival that only the sparrows would make her happy an evening she didn't follow her regular routine of praying she collected a few women from the neighborhood got a drum and started singing with them the whole family persuaded her to stop as she might get ill due to exhaustion the next morning she fell ill it was a mild fever the doctors told them that it would go away but she took it differently according to her she would die soon as her end was near She started chanting prayers as she didn't want to waste her last hours in talking to anyone. The family protested, tried to stop her, but she lay peacefully on her bed chanting prayers and doing her beads. Suddenly she stopped and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers. A calm, pale appearance spread on her face and she was dead. The family lifted her from the bed laid her on the ground and wrapped her with a red colored cloth thousands of sparrows sat silently near her the author's mother fetched some bread for the birds but they didn't eat any they flew away later as the family carried the dead body the sweeper removed the crumbs the next morning the birds were so sensitive they did not want to eat bread but were mourning the death of the one who had fed them for so many days so we see that in this chapter three phases of the author's relationship with his grandmother are explained the first phase was the period of his early childhood when he used to live with her in the village his grandmother used to wake him up get him ready and they both would go to school together and come back home together they had a good friendship with each other then we see the second phase wherein the author and the grandmother shifted to the city where the author's parents had settled although they shared the same room this phase is called to be the turning point in their friendship because they saw less of each other then we see the third phase when the author went to the university 
he was given a room of his own this made their friendship bond weaker as the common link between them that is the same room was taken away and she became quieter and private and kept spinning wheel all day long she would feed the sparrows once a day and this was the only moment of the day when that's she would all for be today happy. in case of any doubts or queries you can drop us a message on instagram or you can also drop them in the comment section below